Fuego, what's happening? I'm Laura Jane. I'm your hostess of this podcast. What's happening, San Diego? You're listening. You love it. Thank you for dropping by and listening today because we have a lot of special treats in store for you. I'm looking at the beautiful, vibrant eyes of Peter Oliver, the man behind Gator by the Bay Festival. And this year, it is starting on May 10th. 10. And it goes all weekend long, right down at the uh, the park across from the airport, which is officially known as... It's called Spanish Landing Park, directly across from Terminal 2. I sound like, <laughs> I sound like a commercial. What are you going to do? <laughs> well, we do want to kind of get commercially with you today because you are providing quite a lovely weekend of activities and music and dance lessons and delicious food and We're going to dive right into things right now. We're going to play a little bit of a track from Horace Trahan right now for you. This is Horace Trahan. He's going to be playing Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at Gator by the Bay. I don't like golf. I don't like swimming. I just like chasing. Them big butt women We gonna do that butt thing Kinda like that look at thing We gonna do that butt thing Then we gonna make that butt swing That was brilliant. Oh, I'm pumped. I want to dance right now. I got a boogie in my bustle. His uh, his band is called Horace Trahan and the Austin Playboys. And uh, that's where he's from. Austin, A-S-S-U-N, Louisiana. And uh, he's been playing uh, Zydeco music on the accordion for like since he was a kid. All right. So welcome, Peter. Well, thank you, Laura Jane. I really appreciate uh, you guys calling me that... that that I got on the short list. So thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Well, you know, it's good. Gator by the Bay is right around the corner, yeah. and it's one of San Diego's premier festivals for music and fun. And I've loved it for years, 17 years now in San Diego. So, of course, we wanted to have you on the podcast, so I'm glad you could fit it in. All right, thank you. Well, we're here at Thunderbird Analog Recording Studio in Oceanside, and last year I got to come to your festival to sell merchandise for Thomas Yearsley's band, The Paladins, and thank you for having the boys there. They put on a heck of a show. Now, which stage was that again? It was That was on the Bourbon Street stage. On the stage, Bourbon Street stage, yeah. Which, by the way, is the same stage that the Titan Ups is playing Woo! on this year. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. We'll be on Friday the 11th, and we start at 5 o'clock. So we're going to be there when the sun is dipping down. I love that time. And, and you'll be in good company, too, because we also have Cafe R&B and Rod Piazza and the Mighty Flyers playing that same stage that night. But that's what we call Gator by Night. We mm. got the place all lit up, and uh, and that's kind of like the special blues stage for that night. Yeah, and then uh, on the Fountain stage that same Friday night, uh-huh. we have uh, of the Rockabilly stage. We got four Rockabilly bands, and uh, and then on the other big stage, the fa- the festival stage is the Zydeco and Cajun stage. And then uh, we have a Saturday night dance, by the way. 
um, at the hotel in the uh, Harbor Island Ballroom. What we have on that night is a what we call the Triple Crown Affair, in which we have a major act happening, which is Keith Frank, and then a bunch of the accordion players that we have coming in for Gator will also join them on the stage. So at one point on Saturday night, there'll be four accordion players. And I know that some people consider that a crime and that you should go to jail if you play an accordion, but, <laughs> but not in this case and not with Zydeco music. This is different. This, this is American music that was born and raised right in Louisiana. All right, I'm hungry for more. I want to hear a little Keith Frank. This is so, just so much fun. He's singing in French, and the title of the song is When I Play My Music, I Want You to Kill the Grass. <laughs> now, he wants you dancing. He wants you dancing, and he wants you to kill the grass, because that's exactly what they do at Festivals Acadian. <laughs> it's in this huge park, <laughs> and, when you, and when you go there on Friday, the grass is green, but when you leave there on Sunday, it's completely dead. <laughs> so I love it. So anyway, let's listen to it. It's a great song. All right, let's do it indeed. This is Keith Frank, Killing Some Grass. <laughs> playing both Saturday and Sunday. Is that right? That's right. Saturday and Sunday. And and Keith Frank is the headliner for the Saturday night dance that I was talking about earlier. Oh, okay. So, so he'll also be yeah. playing at the Sheridan in the which room again? It's the Harbor Island Ballroom. Harbor Island and Ballroom. And I think the, the downbeat on that is at 9 o'clock. Well, I really appreciate that you're bringing that sound as it matches the flavor of the festival so brilliantly. With, um, you know, with all the different flavors that come from that South Louisiana, um, Mississippi Delta region, you know, the blues and, and the rock and the rockabilly and the, and the zydeco and the gospel. You've got them all coming together in one fabulous festival. So thank you for bringing the zydeco. And I understand 10,000 pounds of crawfish are being delivered Live. 10,000 pounds. Let's say it again. 10,000 10, pounds of crawfish. crawfish. I mean, just try it. Okay, look. I can't ima even imagine what that smells like. Imagine a huge moving van, right? Just put that in your hive. A huge moving van, refrigerated, full of 50-pound bags of crawfish. They truck it right out of Opelousas, Louisiana, directly to San Diego, <laughs> <laughs> and, and not only that, not only does he bring it here and boil it right before your very eyes, they also have free lessons on how to eat crawfish. So when you go up to buy some crawfish, you also get taught how to eat them. So, I mean, it's, it's quite an amazing experience. And that's why we're saying we're bringing Louisiana to San Diego. You know, <laughs> it's, it's like this is the most authentic, actual, the most authentic uh, Louisiana themed festival this side of the Mississippi. Yeah, and you've got all kinds of stuff jambalaya and gumbo and. Well, boudin. Boudin? I don't okay. know what boudin is. Well, boudin is a special Louisiana. It's a rice and sausage and secret ingredients stuffed into, let's just say, a sausage sheath. 
Let's, we'll call it that. Okay. Anyway, but as as bad as I'm describing it, <laughs> it's equally as delicious on the other end. <laughs> it's as they say to die for. Oh. And then beignet. We're gonna have yes. beignet. We're gonna have two beignet booths, and we're gonna have chicory coffee. I am salivating. Thank you. Yeah. Well, you've got such a variety of artists. Um, you're having a, a gospel homecoming with our own Earl Thomas. And actually, he is from Tennessee originally, but Earl Thomas is really enjoying such a great career spanning the entire globe right now. And and I'm how did you lure him back to San Diego for this? Oh, well, I begged, I cajoled, I, <laughs> I texted, <laughs> no, I emailed. You know, no, Earl is so easy to get along with. Uh, and um, I did, I got in touch with him. And last, uh, a couple of years ago, he did a guest appearance for me um, with the uh, Blue Largo. He came in and sang a song with him uh, two years ago. And then I told him, I asked him at that time, would he be interested? And then he has since moved back to San Diego. So it was a lot easier to get access to him. And um, and I asked him if he'd like to do um, a show called Gospel According to Earl Thomas. And he actually got quite excited about the idea. And uh, he said yes. And so we we said, okay, let's, let's do it on Sunday. And we'll do it in the early afternoon. And so he put together this really powerful, powerful group that's going to be performing um, on, on Sunday. I think it's about 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It's all on the website, GatorByTheBay.com. Did we mention yeah. the website yet? Yeah. It's yeah. GatorByTheBay.com. <laughs> so it's, it, the, whole, the entire schedule is on the, on the website. Um, so anyway, we're going to have about, I think it's a 90-minute show. Uh, and it's going to be nothing but uh, Earl Thomas's gospel. Now, you know he came from the church uh, when he was, grew up in Tennessee. And then uh, so he, he really loves going back to his roots. Those are his own personal roots. And um, also I'm going to ask him to do a special presentation at the Bayou Grove stage, which is the workshop stage or okay. the acoustic stage. And it's going to be called Negro Spirituals and Plantation Gospel. And uh, this is his idea. He wanted to do it. And so I, I'm making every effort to make that happen right now. I'm looking forward to that show. So both of those Earl Thomas shows are on Sunday, correct? That's right. Both of those shows will be on Sunday. Well, hallelujah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's hear a little something from Earl Thomas. Do you know which song it is? I do not. Oh, yes. I do know what song it is. Yeah, guess what? It's called Plantation Gospel. All right. This, <laughs> <laughs> this is Earl Thomas with Plantation Gospel. at the well, Lord. Oh, Jesus met the woman at the well, Lord. Jesus met the woman at the well, Lord. And he told her everything that she had done. Woman, where is your husband? He said, woman, oh, woman, where is your husband? He said, woman, oh, woman, where is your husband? And she told him, oh, Lord, I have none. And the 
makes me want to shake a tambourine. So we've got gospel, we've got Zydeco, and you've got a, a special guest coming. I understand this is Van Morrison's daughter, Shauna Morrison, is coming on Thursday evening, and uh, she's going to rock it up. You know, I, 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 heard, I had heard about Shauna uh, playing, and so uh, I did a little investigation, and her singing, of course. Um, and when I listened to her, I said, this this is going to be a really, really good show. And many, many people in San Diego are not really aware of Shauna. Yeah, but I had never heard of her. when they see her and when they hear her, they're going to say, ooh la la, that was good. <laughs> and this is on Thursday, and we're having three acts on Thursday. So we have Zimzi Quartet, who are local uh, heroes, doing a little bit of swing, 30s swing music to open up the show at 6 o'clock. Then Shauna will come on at 7, and she'll play for about 90 minutes. She does a, a lot of blues rock, and it's just, it's really uplifting. It's upbeat. She's got a spectacular voice, and her band is killer. And then after, sh after her show, then we are going to have Sonny Landreth. And Sonny Landreth is a uh, Grammy-nominated slide guitar player from Lafayette, Louisiana. So Thursday is going to be a really powerhouse show in about four hours, and it's going to go places. Wow. Wow, well, I'm looking forward to that. I'm all, I'm getting myself excited-pated. <laughs> <laughs> excited-pated. <laughs> is brought to you by Happening. Looking for something to do? Whether it's live music, dancing, theater, comedy, karaoke, trivia night, burlesque, interpretive dancing, you name it, you can find it on Happening.com. Visit H-A-P-N-Y-N.com to find out what's happening near you. Now, you know, this the music moves you, literally. You've been dancing for years. I love watching you dance at uh, Tio Leo's. You're so good. You're so smooth. Uh, you know, you do different styles of swing dancing. And uh, tell me, where did you get your your urge to dance? When, when did you start taking lessons? You know, I, I started dancing probably when I was about 10 years old, dancing just dancing around the house. And then in the early days, there were these uh, dance TV shows like Lloyd Thaxton and American Bandstand. And I would sit in front of the TV after school and watch the kids dance. And then once I hit about 14 or 15, I used to go to church dances on Friday night. This was in Washington, D.C. Okay. So the Catholic churches were trying to do right by the kids and having, you know, chaperone dances on Friday night. And of course, James Brown was like the hit. 
So I figured out how to do the James Brown slide when I was 15. Ooh. So uh, so that was it. Now that's that's how it started, and um, I, I've never stopped dancing since. I took tap, I took jazz, I took ballet. I, you know, I, I always wanted to try some new dance stuff, but mostly what I've come to realize is that I dance from my belly. I don't dance by learning steps. I dance right out of my belly, and I dance to the speed of the music. If the music is fast, I dance fast. If the music is slow, I dance slow. And I try to, I feel my partner, and I feel her with my hands, and I, we touch our hands, and I'm always conscious of how she's moving so that I move with her. So it, it's, it's cool. It's, 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 it's magic, totally magic for me. And I love that you've included your appreciation and passion for dance in the dance pavilion, and you have dance lessons to do all of these great styles of dances that are reflected in your festival. Right. We have this huge dance pavilion. It's called the Bonton Social Club Dance Pavilion at the festival, and there's no charge for it. After you've gotten into the gate, everything that's in the festival is included. There's no extra charges um, that, that you have to, you don't have to spend any money once you're inside other than food and drinks and things like that. But all the entertainment is included. Um, so we have dance lessons. We have, I think, eight special dance lessons per day on Saturday and Sunday at the Dance Pavilion. And we do country dancing. We do Zydeco. We do Cajun. We do swing. We do a whole host of things. So there's a little bit of something for everyone at Gator by the Bay. And it really is true. That's just not a corny phrase. We try to mix it up. And, um, and we went around early, in the early days. We ran, a, ran around to a lot of festivals, and we listened. And every time somebody had something to say, we listened. And we tried to provide a huge variety of things to do and things to see and music genres to listen to and foods to taste. And that's, that's what we're all about. Well, that's fantastic. I, and I, I love that. It is all ages. Absolutely, and so all and ages. you have a kids' day even. Yes, we do. I have we have a special a special kids' day in which which is Thursday morning. The festival's not actually opened, but what happens is we bus about four hundred school children in, and we have food tasting. We give them some Cajun food. We teach them Cajun dancing, and we teach them about Cajun music, and we teach them about Cajun history. So wow. the, the whole thing and it goes from about. I think it's about 9 o'clock to about 11. And then the kids, they all bring their lunch. They do get fed red beans and rice and some uh, other foods that are Cajun foods. And they get taught about red beans and rice. But they also, then they have their lunch there. And then the Museum of Making Music comes in with about 65 or 70 drums and tambourines and things like that. And then all the kids get to make music. And oh, then, how fun. And then a handful, this, this is great, and about a handful, maybe 20 or 30 of them, get to come up on the stage with Theo and Zydeco Patrol and they get to play the washboard. Oh. <laughs> Talking about making a kid's day, right? Absolutely. Oh, my gosh. It's so much fun just to watch them up there. And, 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 you, and you can just see them. They're just like so full of life and so full of music. It's, it's really beautiful. Well, you've given a little bit extra to the community every year. And with your kid's day and this year you're tying in the piano project to benefit the community as well. Can you tell me a little bit about the Piano Project? Sure, of course. Um, I, I learned about the Piano Project uh, through uh, Ken Rexroad, mm -hmm. uh, who does the Sixth Dream Society. And he told me that he's uh, behind the local push for the Piano Project. Basically, it's this. In 1900, in this country, practically every household had a piano. Today, practically no households have pianos. Right. However... Thousands and thousands of these pianos are sitting in storage or collecting dust or sitting in a garage or in somebody's back room. And what the Piano Project does, it goes and acquires pianos. It's all volunteer. They provide um, a, a technician to tune the piano. They, they collectively get together and pick up a piano and move it to a location, typically a school or a nonprofit organization. And in this case... They're bringing it to Gator by the Bay, and they're going to put a sign on it. 
and they're going to say, this is your piano, and anybody who wants to play it can play it. All right. I think it's totally cool. I, yeah, I, I'm I looking forward to it. I love it when they it. put a piano in the airport, and, and then people just are like, oh, I know how to play this, and they go up, and you're like, wow. Right. And there are certain parks that I've noticed have outdoor pianos during you know the seasons that accept outdoor pianos and and uh yeah i didn't know that that was all tied in with the piano project that's so cool and this year also speaking of community if you're an active duty military person with an id you can get into gator by the bay for free that's right and we we decided to do that simply because of where we are and and we want to be able to we want to say we're supporting our military I mean, it's as simple as that. And yeah. and we invite. If you're if you're active duty military, you just show up at the gate, show up at the ticket counter, you have to get a ticket, show them your ID card and come on in. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much. If you want to learn more about this, again, I'm gonna mention this website a couple times. It's Gator, that's G A T O R by the Bay dot com. And you can learn about tickets and who's playing when, and all of the kind of uh, information that you need to have the best uh, view of all of the choices. Because I know not everyone can go for all of the days, but you know you can, you can pick and choose. There's such a big variety. Now, you include a lot of blues in your lineup, and um, I would like for us to hear one of the songs from... Mississippi bluesman Mr. Sip he'll be performing on Saturday so let's play a track from Mr. Sip right I, now I know you're going to like it <laughs> <laughs> I thought so. I, I remember when I first heard Mr. Sip, I said, this guy is going to take us to church, you know? He's going to take us to the blues church, and he's going to show us how it's done. Now, you mentioned um, that he won um, an inter international blues award. Is I believe right? it was. I, I believe it was a couple of years ago, and he won He won the uh, international blues award wow. for the year, as far as I remember. So, Mr. Sip so from that's Mississippi. Cool. That's right. Mississippi blues. Excellent. And you've got quite a few other bluesmen and women. And uh, Carol in Wonderland is going to be playing on Sunday. So how did you find out about Carolyn? Well, I, I, I had heard about Carolyn uh, five or six years ago. And uh, she was always in, in, in the back of my mind. I, I really do love to promote women-fronted groups in San Diego. I think it's really important. 
And then I was lucky enough to see her at Doheny uh, three years ago. And I said, yeah, that's the one. And I said, okay, fine. And it took, it took a couple of years for me to get up to getting her here. But we finally did, and, and we booked her for this year. And um, I am very proud of that. And I think that you guys, all of those of, who are listening, if you, when you hear Carol in Wonderland, if you haven't heard her before, you're going to say, wow, that was a good choice. I'm glad I stayed for the show. Well, let's uh, listen to one of her songs right now. All right. This is Carol in Wonderland bringing the wow factor to Gator by the Bay. I want to talk a little bit more about your choice for headliner on Thursday, Sonny Landreth, your slide guitar player from Louisiana. Tell me about how that all came together. I saw Sonny play at um, Festivals Acadian in Lafayette uh, in September last. And when I saw him play, I was reminded how good his music is, <laughs> and that I better, if I want him, I better get him, because <laughs> that guy's going places, for sure. And uh, he's just a really, really talented guy. He's so, so soulful, and his slide work is just wonderful. We do provide a lot of dancing area on the Thursday night show, so for those of you who want to dance, but I think a lot of people will simply be mesmerized by him. I mean, he, he's so he's so deft in the guitar playing, and I love his voice. It's just really, really approachable, and it's just it's it's a luscious, full voice that is just so pleasant to listen to. Sonny Landreth on Thursday. Let's hear a song from him right now on his slide guitar. <laughs> Thing I ever had. Some people tell me the blues ain't bad. Hurt to 
right. Well, I can see why he was Grammy nominated. Yeah, and I can hear it. <laughs> you hear it? Yeah. I mean, I love me some walking blues, right? Yes. Now, Peter, I want to talk a little bit about you personally. Uh-oh. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just joking. <laughs> I love talking about myself. <laughs> Now, were you the founder of Gator by the Bay? Is that correct? Well, I think that I am credited with uh, it being my idea. Okay. And, um, and the reason it was my idea is because, uh, now this was back in 1990, 2000. What had happened is that I, I have been chasing Zydeco and Cajun festivals since 1988. I went to uh, Jazz Fest in 1988 for the first time, second weekend, and I walked into on Thursday... I walked into the Maple Leaf Bar on Oak Street, and there was this Cajun band playing, the band called Philae. And this guy was pumping on this accordion. Now, i never seen an accordion before, but I have to tell you that music transformed me in an instant. And I like to say that I found it, but I didn't know I was looking for it. <laughs> I did, I found it. And I was tugging on ladies' sh skirts and their sleeves and saying, hey, can you teach me how to do this? And she said, no, I can't teach you how to do this. You got to learn it on your own. <laughs> I said, okay, I'll do that. I'll learn it on my own. And I did. I did. That weekend, I learned how to Cajun dance. And wow. uh, I stayed I stayed at Jazz Fest for th that whole weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And by the end of that weekend, I had figured out how to Cajun dance. I met a whole new group of friends. I mean, I must have met 50 people on that weekend. And then we became, we all became friends. And then, you know, it's really interesting too, is that September following that Jazz Fest in, of 88, I flew to Lafayette for Festivals of Cadian, and there was a hurricane came yes. in. They canceled the festival, but all the people I had met at Jazz Fest, they all came up to Lafayette the same weekend, and we had a party in the parking lot. Nah. We, were, we were dancing in the parking lot of the, of the local restaurants and the bars that did have music. They closed the festival, but they had music in the bars. It was great. Okay, I've got a question. If you could hire anyone, living or dead, with no budget problems at all, who would you want to bring to Gator by the Bay? I'd bring back Buzu Chavez and Bojack. All right. That's who I would have come back so I play. don't know who those people are tell me about that well Buzu's famous quote for me was he was in a studio and one of his guys said hey Buzu you playing that wrong he said no nah, I ain't playing that wrong I said if it's wrong do it wrong like me if I'm wrong you wrong too <laughs> I mean, that, that was the lead into 41 days Buzu Chavez actually changed the face of Zydeco. He brought it out of Louisiana. Him and uh, him and Clifton Chenier. Clifton Chenier, of, of course, was the, considered the king of Zydeco. But he was a, he was a kind of a bluesy Zydeco. Whereas Buzu Chavez, he knew he would play 300 songs in one night. That's what he would say. Whoa. I'll play 300 songs in one night. And they'll play, he play four hours straight without getting off of the bandstand. Four hours. Him and his four guys. They never left the stage. Four hours. And Keith Frank has carried on that tradition to this very day. He'll stay up on the stage for four hours and keep playing song after song after song after song after song. Well, I wish that you could have had those two guys at your festival, but I'm glad that you honor them by uh, bringing their names up, keeping the tradition of Zydeco and Cajun music alive and the blues and the Southern flavors and the, the joy that this music brings everyone and the parade around the whole festival and the costumes that people wear and everyone gets so jazzed for it every year. Do you work on this year round? Is it like never ending now? Well, it's gotten to be that way. Yeah, it has. And, and the reason is, is because we have 70 bands, but we have over a hundred acts and we have all this stuff going on. We have, we're, we're bringing in a chef from Louisiana uh, chef Pat Mould, he's from Lafayette, 
He's quite famous there. Um, he has a restaurant. He teaches. He, he, he actually is integral in running Festivals Acadian in Lafayette, which is an annual event that I talked about earlier. So we're bringing him in just to do food demos. And the, the state of Louisiana finds our festival so authentic that they support us. And last year, I don't know if you remember, the lieutenant governor of the state of Louisiana was at the festival. All right. It was amazing. And, uh, and, and they continue. And uh, actually, the state of Louisiana this year is sending two representatives from the state, and they're sending two Louisiana artists, painters, to this festival. And we're going to have them there talking about the Atchafalaya Swamp Area. So they're basically historical artists. So. Well, people, please <laughs> get your tickets now. We're talking about May 10th, May 11th, May 12th, and May 13th. And it, it's all happening at Spanish yeah. Landing Park right here yeah. in downtown San Diego, across from Terminal 2 at the airport on Harbor Island. Bring your family and experience the deliciousness of Southern life with Peter Oliver and his great <laughs> team. I really, really encourage people to dress up. Dress up. Come with feathers. Come with masks. Come with boas. Come with with just a costume, a colorful costume, and join the parade. Be a part of it. We have a dozen cases of beads. We have thousands of beads that we will pass out. You don't have to bring beads. You come. You pass out beads. We'll give them to you. Join the parade. Be colorful. I'm dressing up in my tuxedo. <laughs> I invite you to dress up in your gowns and your tuxedos and your costumes and anything you want to wear. Bring it on. Come on, have a party with us. Also, I wanted to remind everybody that for families, mm -hmm. um, that children under 18 are free. So oh. your 17-year-old can come for free. All you have to do is bring him or her. As they say, laissez le bon temps rouler. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Peter. <laughs> I want to thank you for putting this on every year, and I'm I'm really looking forward to playing and getting the crowd dancing um, for the Tighten Up show, and I'm looking forward to hearing all these other artists that you've got on on the ticket this year. Four days down by the bay. Let's do it, people. Well, this is Laura Jane signing out. For this podcast, I want to say it one more time, GatorByTheBay.com. Get your tickets and information there, and I'll see you down there with Peter Oliver. Thanks, Laura Jane. I really appreciate it. Thank bye you bye. so much. Au revoir. Au revoir.